Welcome to Pouring Takes. I'm Charlie Van. And I am Rhea. This is Pouring Takes, where we explore bars all over the city of Dallas, try delicious cocktails, and talk about the one thing that our mental health hangs on, sports. Uh, we're here um, at Dirty Bones, but before I get to that, just make sure you go to our website, pouringtakes.com. You'll be able to subscribe to all of our channels. We are on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, X, Threads, etc. Hit us up. Tell us what we should be drinking and what we should not be drinking and how we should be occupying our, occupying our time now that Cowboy season's officially, officially over. Um, all right, Charlie, where are we? We are right here downtown Dallas at Dirty Bones, right across from the American Airlines Center. And it's our regular spot right during, you know, football season, Mavs everything yeah the number of times we've been here together is ridiculous we've been here for like trivia nights we've been here just because <laughs> pre-gaming events at the american airlines center it's a it's the perfect spot to go before an event well the food is amazing the wings are awesome so many great uh choices and sauce but have also we, a really tried? good hamburger too i was gonna say have we tried literally everything on this i menu? think so that's yes. what happens when you're a regular. Yeah, you're, we are regulars here. I'm here almost once a week that at this is true. point. I live walking distance from here, so it's very convenient for me. It's a nice change of pace. Now we're in my side of town instead of Charlie's. Yeah, well, you know, and, and, and we've talked about coming here for a, a while, you know. We, we used to do our, like, pre-show meetings. We did. When we had our, uh, like, older iterations of our podcast. We used to come here with like a legal pad and we would like hash everything out over some chicken wings and look at us now. Now we're recording at Dirty Bones. Hey, it's all about the steps, all about levels. <laughs> well, we're happy to be here. Thank you again for Dirty Bones having us. Yep. Rhea, and, what are we mm -hmm. drinking? Oh my goodness. So uh, just so everybody knows, Dirty Bones does do happy hour on weekdays from four Ooh. to six, I believe. I think it's on here somewhere. Yes, Monday to Friday, open to seven. Oh, it's till seven. Look at that. So yeah, lots of lots of fun specials they have going here. I am drinking an Uptown Girl. Um, it's got vodka, lavender, lemon lime, I think. Um, it's one of my favorite drinks actually, and it's a, a Dirty Bone special. It looks it looks nice. It's it pretty. Kind of, it's like is that pinkish purple? I mean maybe. It's lavender. It's purple. Oh nice! I was on point. Mm -hmm. I was close. I was yeah. close. It's very refreshing and like it's. It's what, like 60 something degrees outside? Like this is the perfect drink to like just sip outside and like people watch, which is exactly what this area <laughs> is perfect for, by the way. Well, I, I should have seen, it does say lavender syrup is in there along <laughs> with, ooh, gray grues, a yep. little bit of vodka going on there. Yeah, what about you? What is, what is this concoction? Well, this is called the uh, Texas Sunburn, which I'll experience this summer per usual. Uh, it has, Acida tequila, lime juice, grapefruit juice, lemon lime soda, and tahini. Tahini. How's it taste? Is it like, is it spicy or is it just like really sweet? Or is it a burn from the tequila? Ooh, there is a little, there is a little <laughs> zest. Said, there is a little zest. Man, I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that that it would be a good out by the pool this summer when I have all my suntan lotion on to prevent the summer burn. Yeah, and if you're not into cocktails, this place also does mimosas and mm. beer towers at brunch, which is always a lot of fun. Yes. All right, let's get into it. Um, so let's start with something fun. Mm -hmm. You had a birthday this weekend. I did, I'm here. <laughs> you're alive. <laughs> I did, I did, you know, thank you all your friends coming, coming out celebrating with me. It was a fun time. Um, you know, breweries, watching some fighting, watching some team wolves. Tanner, our producer over here, drum master. It was a lot of fun over there at Revelers Hall. Now it was a great week and great weather mm -hmm. too, you know, compared to three years ago when we had that ice storm. Oh, and I remember. Yeah, that was a... Uh, was that the time that Edna and I had to like warm you up on the couch at No, K5? no, that was 2020. <laughs> but right, right before that though, that was just a cold winter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember that day uh, my power went out. It's like, oh, this is like my birthday candle. So, oh no. So, but uh, no, it was, it was pretty nice. I mean, it was a little cold, but it was pretty nice overall out. So definitely, yeah, fun times, too much fun. If you had to pick like one highlight from your birthday weekend, what would it be? Uh, probably uh, being at Community Brewing. I mean, I love supporting them. I love supporting all local breweries. So a lot of great beer, food. So. Yeah, I, so I, I attended the tail end of that. I actually <laughs> had the quote night shift of Charlie's friend group because of the fights that night. Um, and I got to check out Community Brewing Brewery, brewery woo, for the first time. 
I tried the uh, Honey Blonde. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So good, I really enjoyed it and I can't wait for another visit. Uh, that was my first time. It, it's a great spot, very dog friendly, especially when the weather is nice out. So go, you know, go check them out. They always got events going on. And by the way, just cheers, yeah. Cheers, happy birthday, another Thank year older, you. another year wiser, and another year of you, my best friend. Wiser is a very loose, vague term, but I'll go with it. Thank you. Let's be positive in 2024, <laughs> okay? Okay. Um, all right, so speaking of birthday activities, one thing we did was we got together with a few friends and mm -hmm. went down to Christie's to watch uh, UFC 298, uh, which took place in Anaheim. And if you watched our last episode, we made some picks. Mm -hmm. Somebody did a way better job picking these fights than I did. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I was, I was in my feelings, especially when it came to Paulo Costa, who actually put out a better fight than I thought he would. Mm -hmm. um, like he looked good, though. He looked good. He looked in shape. He looked like he wasn't buzzing off of a ton the of wine. wine. <laughs> um, but as we learned from the new featherweight champion, Ilya Tor Tor Tep Teporia. Teporia. He loves that red wine diet. Wine, red <laughs> wine diet is great. Yeah. Why not? I mean, he said it why helps not? him. Why not? It helps him with. Drink. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Any puns we have, which we do drink here. No, I mean, he looked in great. I mean, he looked in incredible shape, too. So maybe that's the secret. Yeah, I want to just call this out as your best friend, your co-host, but you calling out Volk getting knocked out yet again. Wow, like the entire bar went silent. Mm -hmm. Like everyone sang uh, Volkanovski's walkout song. Everyone yeah. was like all in on Volk. Second round knockout called by Charlie Van. Incredible. Yeah. yeah Should have put mean, some money on it. <laughs> I know. And this, I could, I could, have, I should have done that. But that's the thing with MMA, though. You just never know. And I, I mean, Ilya Tapura. Just if you look at his body work, you know, it's just he's so explosive, so fast, he's so rangy, and like his accuracy. And that's why. And obviously, and I, I said it too, because like Volk coming off, I still thought it was too short notice. I know they needed him, but at the same time, I mean, that was a devastated head kick knockout. And Ilya is just one of those guys you can't zig or zag. Like yeah. he is right there. He's just too good. He's um, very well rounded. It, yeah. was, it was very unexpected for me um, because I just have all the respect in the world for Volkanovski. But this came up as a conversation topic at, at the fight night. Mm -hmm. um, one of our friends, uh, Sean Ray, realtor, if you need one contact him he's the best at what he does um sean goes how crazy is it that the champs over the last two years are yeah. no longer the champs it's like a whole new generation of championship fighters and it's like nobody across all divisions is able to really stay consistent like it's going to be very telling over these next pay-per-view fights what direction the ufc is going with their champs yeah i mean it just shows you know constantly the sport is growing Fighters are evolving, improving. You know, some of these guys have been around for a long time and just at one point couldn't get it. Now they're they're right there, which is what you want to see. You know, as much as we love the long reign and we're both big fans of Volk, it's just gonna, it's going to get interesting. It's going to be hard to see who's going to be that next Habib, that next John Jones, or that next you know Amanda Nunes. And mm. it's not going to get easy to be those. Not at all. Just because everyone keeps getting better and better and better and learning and evolving. This sport has grown so much. I mean, I've only been in the sport for 10 years, only been in it. But you, if you think about even just the last 10 years, how much it's grown, how many more eyeballs are on the sport, what Dana White has done to grow the sport, the merger with the WWE. There's so many yeah. things going on. And it's we got the big 300 card coming up yep. too. And that's going to be like a whole celebration of everything fighting. It's so exciting. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've followed it since it really its infancy back I mean I was, I was small in 93 but throughout it you know and it, it was a taboo sport that nobody wanted I mean it wasn't even legal in, in New York mm -hmm. until 2016 so that's the right. fact that it, it it's made it all the way to UFC 300 I mean that's huge and it is a household sport now yep definitely and all they need are some household names so it'll be very interesting to see if this next generation of champions can get to that level of like a Conor McGregor or a John Jones or something like that. Something that you can put a face to the name when it comes to the franchise, which is something we've talked about. That's been one of the major struggles with like UFC in terms of like marketing and like putting themselves on the map. Yes, you have that deal with ESPN. Mm. Yes, you work with WWE. There's a lot of like great stuff happening in the background. But if I go to a casual and I say, tell me your favorite fighter, they're probably gonna say Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor hasn't fought in years, let alone yeah. hasn't won in years. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to see somebody in this champ set 
really just break through from that standpoint? Well, my, my thing with the whole, like, and I was thinking about this today, uh, about the whole Conor McGregor is, I mean, he is self-made. I do think there was some stronger push by the UFC, but now everybody behind him, is it going to be a parody? Is it going to be a copycat to be that personality? When he came in, they really needed him. I mean, Ronda wasn't even big yet. They had yeah, lost Ronda. Chuck Liddell, mm -hmm. you know, years before, who was their first, like, really rock star, Chuck and Tito. Um, you know, Rampage could have been that, but he didn't last that long before he had his differences with the UFC. So they needed Conor McGregor at that time. A lot of great talent, just not that one person that's a, really, I think, a pay-per-view pusher. Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot of great talent you can get behind, as long as they don't try to parody, be a parody. Yeah, be your I, own star. I, I agree. They need to they need to come up with their own brands and their mm -hmm. own marketing. And I'm very curious to see how that does that, just as like a PR marketing professional. Myself. Yeah. Um, and also watching our guys go through their struggles of okay, how, what do I need to do to be seen? Because if you're seen, you're going to get fights. Exactly. Which is a whole other story. We can talk about the business of UFC. Yes, that's a whole different day. episode. Um, any L, any other takeaways from this card that you want to chat through before we jump into next week's fight night? By the way, 11 straight weeks of UFC fights. It's awesome. Um, so we're going to have so much MMA content. Like I can't effing wait. This is our like. One of our cornerstones of our friendship. So I'm lucky that we get to chat through all this stuff now. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, uh, another takeaway. Uh, there were some, I think there's guys like Anthony Fluffy Hernandez uh, looked really great. Fighting a guy that had a lot of hype. Um, there's some big matchups for him. He was on Dana White's Contender Series. Love watching him fight. The Kinsey Dern is super freaking tough and durable. But she, she got beat. Yeah. Lemos, Lemos is yeah. going... Well, Lamos is in that weird up and down, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, that was supposed to be, you know, we said Tatiana, and I, I think it, it was going to, that would have been a dominant side by Tatiana just from that wrestling, because there were times where Lamos had a, some troubles there, too. Um, I mean, I'm going to say going with Robert Whitaker, my, my question is, how was he going to respond after losing a Drake of the plus C's? Not just losing, but getting knocked out, because I'm afraid, you know, that's once the chin, you know, we saw him got knocked out by Izzy. But he looked good. He looked. He took a will kick to the head, which would have knocked out anybody. 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 That was impressive. And that was the moment I was like, okay, Paulo Costa is back. Yeah, I mean, Paulo looked great. I mean, I think both of them looked great. I was just more worried about on what that is note, Robert Whitaker. On that note, I owe y'all a shot. You do. I, I said that Paulo Costa was not going to even show up that day. So what, which one are you doing? This is a white tee. I wasn't able to do oh. um, the one I wanted, but that's okay. We're well, you're staying in the vodka. vodka. Yeah. Jinx. Jinx. Okay, I'll drink that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so sorry, Paulo Costa. I will drink this and some wine for you later. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to drink one right here with you. This is like a belated birthday shot. This is, I'm going to stick with tequila. This is the firing squad. So here we go. Is it spicy? Mm. There is a little zest. A little zest. Just getting right there in the in the the beer catcher. <laughs> Ew. You know, I know. Um, I like dripped off the side of my mouth too. I, was I like, know. Oh, like, I can't believe I have to do this on camera. That is the anyone who has a beard, wing shot. I mean, anything seasoning, it stays with us. We have snacks for later. Yes. <laughs> that's. My, I don't need a to-go box. It's right here in my face. Okay, that's enough. All right. I went somewhere else. I don't want to. I don't want to play this All game. All right, uh, drink. Yeah. Just for the thoughts that we don't need to know. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so, chapters closed on two ninety eight. Mm. I'm gonna jump around here. I know I don't have this in order, um, but we'll stick in the. We'll stay in the UFC. Yeah. There's a huge fight uh, in Mexico City this Saturday, headlined by Ford MMA. I don't even know, like, do we call him a teammate? Because he trains here part-time, but he's based in Mexico. Hey, you know what we call him? He is the former UFC flyweight champion looking to head back for another shot. All right, we got Brandon uh, Moreno versus Brandon Roviel. Yeah, the, the Battle of the Brandons. <laughs> the well, Battle it was, of the Brandons. It was, uh, it was supposed to be someone, I, and I, I forgive me, somebody else, and they got hurt, and Roval, who, by the way, is coming off of, you know, just fighting for the title over uh -huh. Pajal in December, so. And Moreno was the backup for that title it, fight. Exactly. So both guys looking for redemption. 
huge historic card, you know, Mexico City, and anytime they go to Mexico, it is such fire and great cards. So every time I think about Mexico City, I think of our coach, Stephen Ocho Peterson, oh. winning his fight of the night bonus on a spinning back fist. Oh, that knockout is still one of Iconic. the greats. Iconic, and you see highlights of it all the time. Yeah. And yeah, that Stephen Peterson, great, great fighter, uh, very, uh, how would you call him? I don't want to say like, He's a man of steel. He was a grinder. That's what the he word is. He, I mean, his durability. I mean, you would talk about someone who could be a machine and, and, and take shots and move forward. And, and that was a must-win fight. I mean, he, that's nothing he wouldn't tell you. And, and he delivered big time. And he never was in a boring fight. Never. You know, never. win or lose, even in his regional scene here in Dallas, man, he is the man of steel for a reason. And he's a, he's a person that he's entertaining. He, yeah, he's he knows how to entertain the crowd. And now he has his own media company, yeah, Ocho so. TV. He's doing great post UFC. But anyway, Mexico City, great venue, great fighters coming out of Mexico. Yeah. I mean, there was a point where we had three Mexican fighters as champions. Um, and pretty much everyone on this card is either Mexican, Mexican American, mm -hmm. um, or at least one fighter in each fight is Mexican, Mexican American. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff. So Brendan Moreno, Brendan Robial, flyweight contender fight. Mm. Um, any fun notes here? Man, both guys are quick. I mean, uh, I love watching flyweights. Yeah. Flyweight scrambles are probably my favorite thing in fighting. Uh, this is going to be another scramble. I think this is going to be another scramble on the ground. Mm -hmm. Marin, both of them. I don't know if Roval is a black foot per se, but he's got great back control. Very great, and so does Marino. I, I mean, I, I could see this possibly going the distance, but I think someone's gonna get finished here. Do you think Moreno's got better boxing since yeah. co uh, since being under the general coach, they say? Uh, I think it's improved or not. I think we saw it evolved at, uh, when it was when we were here back in 2022 with the body of our Kai Kara France, who's a kickboxer. We went so to that fight. We were. And uh, body, oh, nasty liver shot. Never get hit in the liver, by the way. Oh, Sucks. my God. It dropped me for yeah. like five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. I mean, you just, your body just shuts down. But that was the start. And I do th see that it got even better when with safe. And we saw that in the last figure out of fight. So yep. about a year ago. Yeah, so I, I think both of us are safe to say we're both pulling for Brandon Moreno. Uh, really great guy, great husband, great father, uh, great fighter. Um, yeah. So, and getting the headline in Mexico City is great. The other fight on this card, which, no offense to these flyweights, that I find more interesting is another flyweight contender, or a title contender fight. Yeah. Um, between Yair Rodriguez mm -hmm. and Brandon Ortega. Uh, Brandon Ortega, as you know, has fought for the flyweight belt a couple times. Featherweight belt. Sorry, featherweight. Too many F's. He would be a mess. <laughs> I mean, he may take his chance at flyweight. He'll just get that wine diet. Uh, hey, well, he, he probably does like some wine. <laughs> uh, so if you remember Brian Ortega, when he faced off against Alexander Vol Volkanovsky, mm. had Alexander Volkanovsky in a guillotine that was tight, 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 tight. Mm. We all thought it was a done deal, and somehow that bald, strong man wiggled out of his <laughs> grasp. And yet again, Brian Ortega walked away from another championship fight beltless. On the other side of the coin, you have Yair Rodriguez, who is electrifying, mm. to say the least. His kick style is what I modeled my kicks after. And he had that insane last second elbow against Over. Korean Zombie. Oh man, that was uh, probably on the highlight this fight, of the decade. This fight could be so dynamic, yeah. what do you think? Well, yeah, well, first of all, we did see a glimpse of this fight. Unfortunately, Ortega got hurt against Yair about two summers ago, which put him out for a year. Yep. I mean, that was his shoulder popped out. Shoulder, and, and we were excited then. Nobody wants to win like that. Um, so, you know, Ortega's had some time now to recuperate, recover. Hopefully, uh, we'll see. And yeah, Yair is so explosive. Comes from I come from Taekwondo, the black belt, so I always champion and root for those guys because that's a style that it's a great style, but sometimes, like, can it work in MMA? We did see it with Benson Henderson, so Yair was that next high level, mm -hmm. too. So I can't wait. I just, I mean, I hope we get to see it full length. So just as in terms of, like, betting odds, right now Yair Rodriguez is the favorite at negative mm -hmm. 180, but Brian Ortega is the underdog at plus 150. So this is essentially, to me, a pick -em fight. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that Brian Ortega is, quote, more well-rounded. We've seen his jiu-jitsu. We've seen his wrestling. Yair Rodriguez likes to stand and bang. Mm -hmm. He has that, quote, dirty style Mexican boxing, mm -hmm. which I'm a huge fan yeah. of, by the way. Uh, but I would not be shocked if Brian Ortega pulls off this upset. Well, and, and 
And Ortega's had, I mean, he had a layoff, and then especially after the Max Holloway fight, which, I mean, he, I think he broke his hand or his eye, and then he went out and, you know, stopped, you know, zombie. I mean, he's durable. He's, he's not going to lay down. Like, he does not what lay did down. What Ortega hit with that right hook that was iconic? That was uh, that was uh, Frankie Edgar. Frankie I mean, he Edgar, has the ability. Yeah. I mean, he has great boxing too. I mean, these guys are scrappy. I lean more towards Yair. Actually, Yair has really good grappling too. He's slick. He's long. He can throw triangles and arm bars. And he's why I'm I'm gonna pick Yair is so unorthodox and so crazy. And yeah, that's he the is thing. Well. And I just the time off we'll see. But I'm not like I'm right there with you. I mean, Ortega. I mean, he's. This is my fight of the night. Yeah. This, yeah. I, this or, this could be a lot of fun. Ortega could pull off a guillotine. And it could be all over. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I see it. And then uh, you wanted to talk through this one. Uh, Raul Rosas mm. Jr. facing off against recently crowned Ultimate Fighter winner Ricky Turcos. By the way, Texan native from Houston. Mm -hmm. Well, they're both from Houston, actually, right? Uh, I don't know, know about Raul, but uh, oh, okay. So yeah, Ricky, I know yeah. for a fact Ricky's from Houston. Yeah, yeah, Rick, um, Ricky's from Houston. Raul is currently the favorite at negative 280. Ricky Turcos, underdog at plus 230. Raul, note only 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in high school uh, when he won on Dana White's Contender Series to get a contract. And I, I, I'm not saying there was controversy, but I mean, being 17, so he literally turned 18 and debuted in the UFC, which is very young. I mean, the last one to really, I remember Dan Lozon, Joe Lozon, little brother did that, and there was controversy. I mean, he won, you know, but it's just like, is he too, you know, is 18 too young? But hey, he's put together some wins and he's had some losses. Ricky is no walk in the park, guys, a black belt, great strike in long range. So um, my only question is, is it too soon for Raul? We'll see. I mean, the betting odds are really heavy for Raul. Like well, people are really big fans of him. Well, I'm gonna say this and I, and I, I saw this with Macy too for a while until she went up against a veteran, an MMA veteran. Macy who? No, sorry, Macy Barber. Yeah, you can't uh, just be throwing. Yeah, I know. There's around. a lot of Macy. Uh, you know, Macy Barber. Sorry, Macy Barber was also like Raul. You know, um, and you know, I think there's the ceilings high for Raul, but people go behind hype. They're not going based on experience. They don't go these betting. They don't look at what the body. Do you body think is. this is a problem with the UFC in yes. general? Is like we're all prisoners of the moment, mm -hmm. and it, it reflects in the betting odds in Vegas. And you get really, really excited about one fighter, and then they lose, and you're like, but wait, uh, you just beat all these other people. Fighting's crazy like that. Yeah, I mean, I think we like something new and exciting, but we we're not analytical when it comes to really what the skill. And we've seen this. I mean, I've seen it, it's a total time. We saw with Sage Northcutt, you know. So poor Sage. I'm just saying, like, I don't think the odds are too terrible. But Ricky's such a veteran. He's been doing this for so long. So we'll see. And we know what it takes to win on the local circuits mm -hmm. here. So Ricky's definitely had quite the grind. Oh, he's cut his UFC. teeth. Yeah. And he lost on Dana White's Contender Series before, and then he went on to the Ultimate Fighter. So he he's had a long roll, and those guys they find a way. Yeah, all right, I'm with you there. I'm going to roll with Ricky as well. Uh, the last fight I want to call out because she fights for Fortis and is a friend of mm -hmm. mine. Um, you got Yasmin Yar Yarigui versus Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes trains here in Dallas at mm. Fortis MMA. Um, Sam's had a couple challenging fights leading up mm -hmm. to this one, but Lucky Girl gets a spot on the main card, so yeah. that's got to be super exciting for her. Um, I just really want to see her like redeem herself. I want to see her come in with um, her really strong boxing because it's Mexico. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and as you said, you, you know of how hard she's worked, and, and, and really, I, I, I've, I've followed, you know, before she came to Fortis, I, I knew Sam on the LFA, the regional scene here, and watched, followed her, you know, career in the beginning, and, and, and she's always looking to improve. She's scrappy. She's as so scrappy. She's as durable as they come. I mean, it's, it's uh, her nickname is Sam Page, so, yep. and she, that's what she does. And she's got great cardio. Great, great cardio. cardio. She comes at you, you know, machine, and she's ever been of her nickname. Um, so I'm interested to see the improvements and, you know, like I said, she's always adapted, so. Oh yeah, we're rooting for you, Sam. Go get that win. All right, let's change it up a little bit, getting away from MMA. Uh, All-Star Weekend took place mm. this past weekend. Literally yesterday was the All-Star Game and all the Saturday night festivities were happening at the same time <laughs> we were watching the UFC fight. And everything else. Uh, <laughs> You know, we've both just seen highlights. I didn't get to watch the All-Star game last night. I know the East put up over 200 boys, which is just insane mm -hmm. to me. Um, yeah, no defense at play per usual. But out of things you saw, the conversation around All-Star weekend, what was your takeaway from this week with uh, in Indiana? 
Yeah, I mean, slam dunk contest. Congrats again, uh, Mac Malone. I mean, you. you He's a star. Like, I mean, I mean, just when it comes to, like, last just year. Just when it comes to Duncan. Yeah, yeah, when it comes to Duncan. <laughs> but, hey, I mean, I like what I see. I mean, to, hey, I get that back-to-back. -back. I mean, that's great, especially with everybody that's involved with that uh, three-point contest. That was fun to watch. Um, but to my opinion, those were the only things I were like, that was fun. That game was not fun. I will throw in the all-star uh, celebrity game on Friday night was fun. Micah Parsons won MVP. But those are always great because it's not, you know. And I think NBA. that I think the addition of the girls versus boys mm -hmm. three-point shootout between Steph and Sabrina was phenomenal. Sabrina mm -hmm. said early on, she goes, "I'm going to shoot from the men's line, not the women's line." Mm -hmm. Major kudos to her. I was watching um, JJ Redick on his podcast today. Yeah. And he was like, my kids didn't give an F about anything else but this three-point shootout. Because everybody can look at Sabrina and be like, she's like the queen. Mm -hmm. Everyone look at Steph, he's the king. king. And uh, for them to go head-to-head -head, and for her to score as many points as Dame Lillard did to win the actual three-point shootout mm -hmm. is super impressive. And uh, JJ Redick made an interesting point. He said, both of them signing on to do this they both had a lot to lose. Like, it could have gone really bad for either one of them. Could you imagine if one of them just absolutely shit the bed and was like, yeah. I missed everything? But it was such a dynamic duel. It was so close, and you just can't beat Steph, man. Well, I mean, he's the best. He's going to go down as the best to ever do it. Um, here's the thing. Like, thank God that competition happened. And even the slam dunk and the also because... If not, this would have been a shit show weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially with how that All Star game was. How would you make All Star weekend better? Because I feel like when I was growing up, NBA All Star weekend was probably my favorite of the All Stars. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like baseball's taken that. I yeah. with the home run derby and all of that. And I feel like in baseball they play for home field advantage in the World Series, don't they? They did. Not anymore. Oh. But they still play with passion. I mean, they're still. Co Here, here's how I would make it better. I sit down with the guys and like just talk about the investments, like. This, this can be a little bit of pride. Like, I mean, you still owe it. You still owe it to the people that buy tickets to come watch this. I mean, you owe it. How about the people that don't get to be a part of the spectacle? I always say, for those that are sitting in that college bench that is not in the NBA in that, I mean, I know All-Star is different for a regular season game, and I know they don't want to hurt themselves. You can still have fun and competitive. Go down to any of these parks and people are having fun. There ain't nothing on the line. It's how it used to be, because you're competitive, you're the highest level, and you can have fun with it, too. And this is a time where you can be flashy and talk smack. I am with you. Yeah. I think ditching five on five is the way to go. I mean, I hey, think, yeah, do it. I think it would be really fun if they did it like the Olympics. Olympics has three on three ball. Mm -hmm. And you could do like a little tournament. Like it doesn't have to be full games. It doesn't even have to be like 12 to 15 minute quarters or whatever. It could be like quick 10 minute games. Or better yet, make me a bracket of one on ones. Mm -hmm. Just have these guys play 21 and tell me who out of all these all stars is the best. I think that would be a lot of fun. No, I agree, because we don't always get to see these matchups, right? No. Yeah, I mean, the pending schedule, pending playoff success, and this is the one time, okay, I may not see you down the road. Let's see right now, because when the, how about play like with the lights are, there's no cameras, you go to the gym. They should like go outside yeah. somewhere and play on like, like an iconic like park. Court, like, I think that would be awesome. Like they've got to add some flavor. It mm -hmm. is it is very bland for for a league that is typically the quote spiciest of them all. This shit has been bland. Well, and I used to give NFL a lot of grief for the Pro Bowl, and they at least spiced it up. And I don't even mind the flag football because they're having fun and they do some fun stuff. Yeah, by adding the dodge. Ball yeah, and, and the, the tug of war cat. is great. Tug of war is hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, they took they took the things that make football great and like made it digestible. Mm -hmm. Um, in a really fun way that no one gets hurt. And I feel like the NBA needs some sort of rebranding when it comes to the All-Star game. Well, because if you're not a huge basketball fan, you're sitting here, let's say, here at Dirty Bones or someone, but, and your friend wants you to tune in, why should I even care? Like, yeah, I mean, I didn't the care. The players didn't care, you know? And it's like, you should. this is a time where you, the one weekend where you can kind of, like, goof up, be exci extra exciting without any real gamble. And you didn't even look like you wanted to like be there. Like this is your one fun time before everything matters. Yeah, because now we're we're heading into the playoff mm. push for sure. Um, speaking of said playoff push, let's get away from this awful All Star game nonsense. Yeah. Um, Mavs, like we said a couple episodes ago, made two outstanding trades leading up to the end of the season to our playoff push. Uh, everybody's pretty much healthy now. 
what happens next. I believe we play Phoenix next on Thursday, by Ooh. the way. So that'll be really telling and interesting, right? Well, there better be effort in that one. <laughs> <laughs> there better be. I, it's, I mean, those two guys, it's like, Batman versus Joker, and you can switch the card depending on what fandom you are. But that's they're, they're the ultimate dance partners. Like, it, I love tuning in to watch those two teams. And right now, the Mavs got better. The Mavs added the weapons they needed to. Mavs are currently sitting at seven, so still yeah. technically a play-in team. Yeah. Um, what do you think we need to do to make sure that we don't end up in the play-in? Uh, stay healthy. I mean, you saw when you both have Kyrie and Luka together on the same court, now added with Washington Gafford, like it, this team looks unstoppable. But they're going to be stoppable if they if one of those guys goes off the I mean, it's going to be really hard. You're looking at teams like Minnesota, mm. Oklahoma City, Denver. That's your, that's your top three, yeah. essentially. And you, you say Clippers, Suns. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody in the West. But the West is highly competitive. It it's going to be really hard to climb up that uh, ranking. Thankfully, the game, it's a very tight. Like, yeah. It's games apart, like one or two games apart at each, uh, at each seat. So well, this is where we were last year, where the, the unra we got Kyrie and then the unraveling. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to relive that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but luckily, you know, bringing in Washer guys, we didn't have either of those guys, but we just stay healthy. Stay, stay what you're doing now, and you got to be aggressive. Yeah, definitely. All right, I don't know if you guys caught this, but I made a face because they're showing the highlights from today's oh, Stars Bruins game. Put a drink um, there. Yeah, drink all the drinks. So, going today, yeah. the Stars have been 7 2 and 1 mm. in their last 10. Um, or 7 1 and 2, my yeah. bad, with two overtime losses, that is. Um, and then we see this today. We were up 3 to 2 in the third, mm. choked away. Uh, another goal went into a shootout. Thankfully, survived overtime. Yeah. Went into a shootout and ended up losing via shootout. Um, you know, and then we lost in overtime the game before against mm -hmm. Edmonton. Uh, should I be worried? Well, I mean, you know, for a while we were talking about, man, they got over those overtime woes. Like, and now here we are again. Now, I will say, uh, by the way, congrats to Mira Hiskin and him and his wife just welcomed Aww. a newborn baby. Um, yeah. which, so he couldn't make the trip under family. I mean, I don't think he's a, a, a big reason for today's loss, but he's definitely a factor. But two back-to-back -back losses where this was one of the hottest streak teams for the last couple of weeks. It comes down to the defense. Yeah. It really does. The offense is doing its job. Offense is putting points on the board. And Boston's not an easy team to play against. In fact, going into today, Boston and Dallas had the same number of points at 75. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, this is a very equal matchup. But it's the defense that's losing the games for us, which is a problem across all Dallas teams except for the Texas Rangers. And what's sad is for two seconds, we're like, man, the defense looks better, but now they're looking like defense last year. Yeah, and we also got the Rangers tomorrow. Rangers mm. also came in really hot yesterday, winning mm. a, in, a, in comeback fashion at their stadium series game against the New York Islanders. So they're riding high. Yeah. We're coming off a loss in Boston. Gonna have to play them on a back-to-back. Do I smell losing streak? Man, I hope not. But, uh, I mean, it, it possibly could. I mean, I don't know what the lineup tomorrow is going to look like. Um, we'll see. I mean. Yeah, but, we got to play at the Garden. But, yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, the Rangers play very physical hockey. And this is exactly when you need that defense to come back and be aggressive. And, you know, in the beginning of the season, they did. But mm -hmm. now it looks like, are they winded? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like Boston plays a very, like, speed game. Kind of reminds me of that Seattle team we played in the playoffs. But it's Boston. Okay. And, oh, and then ahead. New York, I feel like, plays very tactical and organized. I don't feel like they're fast or overly mm. aggressive. They're just really smart. Well, and this is, you know, I, I think DeBoer, for the most part, has done a great job. But if you're a Knights fan, this is what this was your angst with him, is he's so offensive minded. So how can you get that defense back to being motivated? You know, you saw a little bit of hope. Where can we get that hope and turn it bigger? Yeah, and the defense doesn't have to significantly improve. I'm telling you, it's a very slight. It's got to yeah. be like a little knob turn, essentially, because, mm. yeah, as, as much as I would like to be a team that shuts everybody out, yeah. that's just not logical. Um, so I wonder where the adjustment's going to come in, if they're going to have to bring in somebody or not. I, I don't know. Did the trade deadline already pass for the NHL? Because I know it passed for the I, basketball. I, if it hasn't, it's real close. Yeah. So. We'll have to double check that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can comment on it either way. Either way, though, I mean, it's there. You, it's a tight race. 
here. I mean, I feel like the Mavs and the Stars are in the same boat right now. They always are. I feel like yeah. the Mavs and Stars mirror each other very well in terms yeah. of like where they stand within the league. I, I will say the Stars have the slight advantage. They are still winning their division yeah. at the yeah. moment. Um, Although I didn't check the standings after that. I mean, it's pretty it. close up there, though. I mean, I think, uh, you know, with Vancouver and, like, in Colorado, Colorado are, are right in the rear of their mirror. So, like, you, you can't drop to tomorrow. Yeah, we need the win tomorrow. So, yeah. boys, get it together. We can't lose three in a row. That shit's mm -mm. embarrassing. Mm -mm. Um, all right, cool. So we talked about basketball. We talked about hockey. We talked about MMA. Let's get into WWE because there's a big pay-per-view this weekend. And I know nothing about Elimination Chamber. Yeah. So can you explain this to me? Well, one, and, uh, if you're going to be watching it and you're here in, the, in, in North America, get your coffee because it's going to be 5 a.m. or 4 uh, a.m. Or 4 4 here, but 5 a.m. on the East Coast. Yep. Um, so, because it is in Perth, Australia. Uh, so, it's a huge, huge pay per view. Great that they're going to Australia. Obviously, Rhea Ripley being from Adelaide. I mean, happy for her that she gets to showcase there against Nia Jack. So, Elimination Chamber, which the first Elimination Chamber match was uh, November of 2002 Survivor Series. Shawn Michaels won that one. What does uh, it mean to so, be in the Elimination so Chamber? So Elimination Chamber, so for so long, wrestling's had still cages. The next evolution was the hell in the cell. So in 2002, they're like, what can we do better? So they created the Elimination Chamber, which are, there's these pods. It's almost like Royal Rumble. There's a new entry person each time till everybody is in the pod. So the clock will tick, and then a new person will enter out of this cage pod to verse the next. How do you, how do you eliminate people? Pinfall. And even the champion can okay. be pinned and be out, and other guys are going. It happened to Edge years ago, which is funny. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it is elimination. It is actually a very hard structure. And just saying, wrestlers have been in and said, it sucks. Uh, I mean, there's no way. I mean, it's all still, and you're falling on it outside of the ring. Um, it's fun to watch. Are, like, steel chairs, chains, and all of that involved? Or is it just straight? No, like it's just straight. It's just a long, huge, huge cage dome that people take liberties, some high flying. It's fun, it's fun to watch. Oh, so there are ladders? No. Now you can climb up the cage. Oh. There's like a dome. If you've ever seen um, Mad Max Battle or yeah, Thunderdome, like it's like a big old In bird cage. It looks like a big bird cage. And it's pods, so guys are, you know, and women. There is the women's elimination chamber too now. Um, so what every does time the winner get a title shot. Now it depends on what that title shot is. This one, this coming weekend's for the Seth Rollins, your guys, heavyweight title. Sometimes it's been for the United, you know, or, or they've had the United States title on the line. It just depends on the stakes. Um, usually, though, the title's already on the line uh -huh. uh, in it. But this one is to determine the winner uh, to face Seth Rollins, which I think we all thought was going to be CM Punk. So it's, it's fun to watch. I don't know how they put their bodies through that. Yeah. It's, it's brutal. Yeah, now that I've been watching so much wrestling, I, I have a newfound respect yeah. for that. It, it's, it, I, every time, it's uh, my favorite is Montez Ford last year in the United States, title on the line. He, he climbs up like Spider-Man, hangs upside down and flips onto all of them. I'm like, no thank you. No thank you. I have a height all right. sphere. <laughs> all right, so knowing that on the men's side, Winner gets Seth Rollins, I'm assuming, at WrestleMania. Yeah, and then women's side gets Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Right. Okay, so Charlie, tell me who you think is going to win and who you want to win. So I think on the men's side, I, I, I do feel like it's leaning towards Drew McIntyre winning. I mean, just he's, you know, his angle with Cody and Seth, and he's right now the biggest, I think outside of Gunther, the biggest hill on Raw. Um, and then I think who I would love to win. I mean, LA Knight's in there. I like LA Knight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I think he's still one of the top baby fans. As everyone's behind him, right? He's who I would want to win, but I think it's going to be Drew McIntyre. Uh, on the women's side, I think and want uh, Rhea Ripley. Because I, I'm not Rhea Ripley, sorry. Becky Lynch. I was going to say, she can't beat herself. I mean, that would be fun, though. I would watch. <laughs> uh, no, I think Becky Lynch. I mean, she, her and Rhea, that's the biggest match to make at WrestleMania. I agree with you. I think I think Beck is, is the one, a way to go on the women's side. On the men's side, just because I'm controversial, what about Logan Paul? I think 
He would be fun, but him already having a title doesn't make sense. And I think him versus LA Knight at WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think him versus uh, LA Knight at WrestleMania is the fun one. Well, I mean, they're going through a lot of changes yeah. with the allegations and all of that stuff. So, I mean, nothing is out of the realm of possibilities. Also, going to see how the storyline with The Rock. Yes. Thank you also, so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Shout out again to the lovely Dirty Bones. <laughs> Taking good care there. of us. <laughs> uh, the reason why I also don't think Logan Paul, we already saw him and Seth Rollins last year in a non-title fight. I just don't think the fans right now would be behind that. So uh, I would love him in LA night, though. That would be a fun. Well, we will see where everything takes us yes. Saturday morning. Staying in the entertainment realm. Yes. Love is Blind season six dropped this past Valentine's Day, and Charlie and I have been binge watching it <laughs> because we are total reality yeah. TV junkies, especially when it comes to dating shows. I don't know why. <laughs> we like love, right? We, you we know? believe in love. And we or no, no, we like life. other people's love lives. We do. We like other people's. Because this is fun to watch, and and then you take notes of what definitely not to do. Uh, yeah, I hope you are learning because some of this stuff is toxic. And I was telling you before we started filming that the season before this one was so bad because of how toxic everybody on the show was. And I think, you know, this season, not that they could take notes because I'm sure they had already started filming when we started watching season five last year. But, you know, this, this cast is a lot more digestible, a lot more relatable. Um, but let's get into it. Instead of breaking down these six episodes, which we could do for hours and hours, yeah. and, let me lead off with this. So far, through these first six episodes, who is your favorite couple and why? Oh, man. I, I mean, I love Kenneth. It's Kenneth and Amy. Uh, and Amy. Yeah, right? Kenneth and Amy. I, no, it, Amy and jo Johnny. Amy and Johnny. Yeah, and, and it's Kenneth and... Sarah? Mm, no. Not Sammy? Mm, we looked this uh, up before yeah, we filmed. Well, <laughs> Kenneth, I love Kenneth. He's the middle school uh, principal. Um, I do like Johnny and Amy so far. I mean, we haven't got to see a whole, whole lot of them, but they seem very playful. They seem so far to be working out. Yeah, I will say the same thing. Both those couples, I think, are not getting that camera time just yet. Yeah. Because of how toxic the other well, couples I know. are. I know. <laughs> I think they're more natural and everybody else is... Still trying to figure themselves yeah. out. Um, yeah, I have to agree with you. Uh, what about who you think so far is like the villain or the most toxic person? Not necessarily in a couple, but just the most toxic person. Well, it's definitely got to be Jimmy just because of the whole Jessica, Jimmy situation. But Jessica, even now, Jimmy, Chelsea? Yeah, and even with Chelsea and then him interacting with AD, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and when they commenting all on her figure and everything mm. and talking. Like, you're already stirring the the pot and Chelsea saw that and became emotional and I mean rightfully so I mean you never want your man telling another girl how gorgeous she is like in front of you that's super awkward unless it's like something you yeah. already talked about and you agree on and you're part of the conversation you'd be like yeah girl your body's banging but like it's still super uncomfortable yeah and, and she called him out she called him out good and for then, her yeah. Yeah, I, I have to appreciate the women on this show like holding these men accountable because mm. I feel like in past seasons, guys got away with a lot of behavior. Bartiste looking at you. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, so, I'm not a big, I'm not too sold yet on Jeremy either. Jeremy. Jer <laughs> with an no, extra he's got a. Jeremy with an A. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sold on him as well. I, I feel like Jimmy, Jeremy, Clay are all sus. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there was an exchange between AD and Clay where she was like, you know, one day I'm going to have a baby and my body's going to change and I may get bigger and this and that. And he was like, nope, nope, I'm going to yell at you to make sure you're in the gym. I'm going to make sure that you keep this figure. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And it was so like. And that's when you were like, hey, uh, just, sh just shut up, Clay. <laughs> she's like, she's like, I have a, she's like, yeah. so I have a personal trainer who yells yeah. at me. I don't need it from the man I'm, that is my partner who loves me and is supposed to support me. I mean. I've dated athletes. I know that they are very particular on like how their women needs woman needs to. <laughs> women. So does he win cringe titles so far? Yeah, I think he's a little cringe. It was really interesting because he, in the pods, like even tried to get her to tell him what she looked like. He was like, "Yeah, I can't marry anybody unattractive," and I'm like, "That messes up like the entire boundaries of the experience." Yeah, that's is love or the blind. Experiment. Yeah, and he was trying to like take a little shortcut, and she stood her ground. She did a great job standing her ground, and not revealing anything about what she looked like yeah. and she's beautiful by the way and he must have been hella <laughs> relieved when he saw her uh but yeah he, he showed a little bit of like this narcissistic narcissistic qualities and that was a little 
That was a little hard for me to digest watching that. Um, what about your favorite cast member so far? Jessica. Jessica. Uh, okay. I, and, and the reason why, and, and unfortunately, it didn't work out with her and, and uh, Jimmy. Probably for the best. Yes, pro definitely for that. Because I mean, she, her, her conviction, she wears her heart on her sleeve. You know, she's got a daughter. She's open about that. Which at first, you know, she was like, I'm, I'm not too sure. You know, want to say that, but you can just see how passionate she is. And you know, maybe it's. You know, I don't have any kids, but you know, I have niece, nephew, got you know, got our friends with kids too, and, and maybe I'm just in that age range. But like, I just kind of, I feel for that and support that, and I don't know, like, I was really rooting for her here, and and she was not afraid, and I like people who are forward. Her monologue when he broke up with her yeah. went viral. Like, yeah, she's so iconic. She was like, "You are going to choke when you see who I am and yeah. what I look like and how I carry myself." Yeah, like, yeah, girl, he is gonna choke you. One, are beautiful. Two, you're a great mom. Yes, I stalked her social media. Yeah. And three, she has a lot going for her. She's mm. like running her own businesses and doing all mm. these things. Um, yeah, I really think Jimmy's gonna totally regret his choice uh, with Chelsea, who yeah. allegedly looks like Megan Fox, but that's yeah. like a different conversation for a different day. Um, I would say my favorite cast member so far is Trevor, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Trevor got snubbed by Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea went with Jimmy instead of Trevor. Trevor called her out and was like, you're gonna pick someone who's not totally sure about you over someone who actually is mm. sure about you? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I felt like Trevor described himself so well. He was like, yeah, everyone looks at me and thinks I'm such a meathead and that I'm kind of an F boy and this and that. But the way he carried himself in the pods, the way he ran his conversations, he was so genuine and so loving and so wholesome. And now he's all over my TikTok feed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. No, he is, and uh, you know that that scene with him and Chelsea was so intense. So it's, heartbreaking. Uh, like I really thought she should have chosen him, and well, I, I think she wishes she would have chosen him. And it's going to be really interesting to see when they put them all back together. Ooh, this next episode. How all the drama is going to shake out. So I mean, we touched on this a little bit earlier about you know there, there are three couples outside of the two that we named earlier. Which one of those three do you think is going to break up first? Oh, Chelsea, Jimmy. I think it's going to be Laura and Jeremy. Laura looks at Jeremy like he's a child. Well, you think they, they are going to push Jimmy and Ch along or just for the yeah, drama? Just yeah, just for the drama. Yeah, okay. I, I, think, yeah. I think that's going to be the, the like money-making couple. They're not going to end up together, but they're going to keep you I think he's already done with her, though, mentally. I, don't, I think he was done with her at the reveal. Yeah, I think yeah. he saw her and was like, you don't look like Megan Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say. Ooh, and he kind of commented. He, I was like, dude, like he kind of commented on that a little bit. Like, you said you looked he's like Megan Fox. not wrong. No, but he should have picked her based on a, yeah, description, a physical description. Yeah. Again, ruining the boundaries of said experiment yeah. is love blind. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, Laura, Jeremy, and then Sarah Ann's love triangle journey. And I think that one, they were all very respectful of everybody's mm -hmm. feelings so that when Jeremy eventually broke up with Sarah. Sarah, Sarah took Ann, it the best. She took it very well. She was, she, yeah, she was super nice. Um, and Laura was like, yeah, I have this in the bag. I have this in the bag, but I'm not going to talk my shit. I'm just going to let things happen. And you know what? Um, that really paid off. But when they met in person, <laughs> <laughs> Laura was like, uh, I don't know how to deal with this personality at all. Well, and she was saying that. She's like, how, like, you're going to push my buttons. Because, I mean, I, I, I think he's definitely one of those guys. Or just people that can probably be a lot and bouncing all over the, the walls. And mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think the season's going to be a lot more fun rather than toxic as compared yeah. to previous uh, seasons. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next. I don't even know when the batch, next batch of episodes drops. Uh, the 21st, so this coming Wednesday. Oh. Tune in, Love is Blind. We'll probably talk about it some more because I'm invested already. Yeah, I've missed gonna... the last couple of seasons, but I'm, 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 I'm hooked back in. Yeah, definitely. Um, so next week, we're back here at Nerdy Bones. Yes. Uh, is there a Stars game or a Mavs game? Do we know? We do not, no. Or, look well, let's look at it. We do have phones. We do have technology. No, I, I like literally have the calendar on. <laughs> oh. I have the American Airlines She's on top calendar of on my Either way, phone. if you're if you're Oh, we got, we got the Islanders in town playing the Stars at Ooh. 7 next Monday. Well, so we will be here for pregame festivities. We can chat through what we think about the game, uh, star season moving forward. We'll recap the UFC fight night in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. 
touch on Love is Blind, what happens next after they return home from the Dominican Republic to beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina, and whatever else we can dig up. Well, and uh, you know, since we do like to uh, do shot takes, do you want your shot take to be Love is Blind? Do you want it to be? Uh, oh, my shot take is going to be Brian Ortega beats Yair yeah, Rodriguez. Oh, okay, so we're going to do MMA shot takes? I mean, that's mine. You don't yeah. have to do the same okay, thing. Okay, so mine is uh, Drew McIntyre winning the Elimination Chamber. Yep. Tons of things to break down next week. Go. Looking forward to seeing you all then. Have a great week.